Hey guys, Paul here with GearTest TV and today I'm reviewing the Folding Crane Slider from Axler. So this is the Axler Folding Crane Slider and you're probably thinking to yourself that this looks absolutely nothing like a slider and you're right, it doesn't. You're probably used to the sliders that have two rails and like a pod that slides back and forth with the camera on it. And those are great, but they're also very bulky. And sometimes that's not an issue, but if you're trying to travel with it or if you're trying to uh, film in small spaces, it can be very difficult to lug a slider around. So that is where this guy comes in. I mean, look at how small this is. So this thing has a tracking distance of 28 inches, which means you're gonna get the same range of movement out of this slider that you would a regular 28 inch slider. But the difference is that this thing is only like nine and a half inches long. So it's very, very small. Now this is not the lightest slider out there. There are carbon fiber sliders that uh, are a little bit lighter than this. Two point four two pounds. So there are sliders out there that are lighter than this, but you're not going to be able to just throw those into a backpack. <laughs> However, with this slider, it's pretty easy to just throw into a camera bag and go. So if you do a lot of run and gun shooting or if you travel a lot, this would be a great slider for you or if you shoot weddings, because I remember when I was filming weddings and I had this massive four foot slider that I would lug around the reception trying to get sliding shots and there was just no way to not take up like 30 square feet with that thing. It was massive. With this thing, it's going to take up very little space, which means it's easy to just move out of the way quickly if you need to. Now, along with the slider inside this fancy box that it comes in, you have a quick start guide. You have a piece of foam. Test one, two, test one, two, three. And then you also have this little ball head. So if you notice on the top of it, there are two quarter 20 studs and one of them is linear, which just means if you mount the camera to that stud, as you move the slider back and forth, it's gonna continue facing the same direction. And then right next to it is a quarter 20 thread that says parabolic. And essentially what that means is that as you move the slider from one end to the other, it's going to point constantly toward the middle to keep the same object in the center of the frame. Right next to that, there's a small lock that is designed to keep the slider from moving around until you're ready to use it. So for that, all that you have to do is pull up and twist 90 degrees and it will stay locked. And then you're ready to use your slider. So we can put this ball head on the top and I'm going to just attach it to the linear side here. Now there is a little bit of a learning curve to using this slider. For example, if you're used to using most sliders, you can just kind of push the camera along at the same speed in a straight line the entire time. And you can do that with this slider. In fact, sometimes uh, if I want to get really slow movements with this slider, I do just move it using the, I, don't, I try not to touch the camera just to not introduce any additional shake, but just using either the uh, knob behind it or the ball head itself, you can kind of push the camera along just at a slow, smooth motion in a straight line. But if you wanna use the knob in the back, it's a little bit different. It's a little tricky to get used to because you can't just move it in a straight line. As the camera moves in a straight line, this knob is going to move around in a circular motion. So you have to be careful with that or you'll end up with the camera starting off slow and picking up and getting faster and then it will slow down on the other side and it's just not a silky smooth slider shot like you're probably trying to get. Now something to be aware of with especially this slider is that you're going to want to use a very stable tripod. If you get this thing completely maxed out to one side, there's nothing on the other side over here to uh, counterbalance the slider on top of the tripod. So all of your weight is on this one side. 
Now, a general rule of thumb is to make sure that the slider legs are wider than the tracking distance of the slider. That way you know that as you're using the slider, the center of gravity will never go out beyond the camera legs and cause the tripod to tip over with your slider and your fancy camera on top of it. Now the slider does have a maximum load capacity of 4.4 pounds, which means it should really be able to handle any DSLR that you have. Uh, now if you start adding like say a fluid head or a more heavy duty ball head to it, that's gonna add some additional weight as well. Now with that said, and this really just goes for sliders in general, but the lighter the camera, the better. All in all, if you are looking for a compact camera slider, if you do a lot of traveling or you just need something that's easy to store, easy to move around, this would be a great slider for you. Once you get used to kind of the way that it works, once you do a little bit of shooting with it, you're gonna be able to get some great looking uh, slider shots and it's gonna make your footage look that much better. So that's all that I have to say about the Axler Folding Crane Slider. If you're interested in it, head over to the Axler website or to B&H and check it out for yourself. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.